Hey there everybody, we're going to dive in on a new Satellite 101 video. This one, this loop is really fascinating. I think this is going to be an example of how you can tell a lot about an environment simply by how the cloud's moving, how are clouds moving, how do they appear, those sorts of things, okay? So let's get going. So the first thing we're going to look at, let's just take a look at this satellite loop and let's loop it around a few times so you can kind of see uh, generally what we're going to be talking about. You can kind of take it in right here. This is everything you need to know about today's storm environment. There's a lot to discern here. There's a, a few like local terrain things you should know about, but generally we're, we're, we're learning a lot right here, okay? So now let's dive in. Let's talk about what we're seeing, okay? Well, let me get this annotate tool up. Fun stuff. Annotate tool is up. It's live. First thing you're going to notice, and I think uh, it, I, I think the first thing you notice is probably uh, th this right here, right? <laughs> you're probably noticing these storms forming. But what I notice, one of the first things I notice is this right here. You're seeing these clouds down over here, they're moving down, right? They're moving from north to south. This is a sign that you have cold air advection going on. Look at all these low clouds. Look at all these low clouds through here, right? It's just a lot of low clouds happening. And I think that uh, one of the easiest ways to tell, hey, there's like a cold front is when you have literally <laughs> low clouds like this going south but then on the front side, uh, you have low clouds going like this, right? So you can tell there's some converging air masses going on here already. You don't, you don't need to be a genius to figure that out, right? Converging air masses. And of course, because of that, you are getting this right here. You're getting these storms form up and they're zippering down too. We'll talk about all that in just one second. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about what's going on here uh, on a broad scale. You can see a couple other things I wanna point out. Uh, you can see right here, you can see this Cirrus uh, working its way through. You can kind of make out Cirrus, there's some over here too. Uh, and to me, usually, we've talked about this a couple of times on this channel, but when you see Cirrus like this, usually means there's something going on in the upper atmosphere because clouds are able, or you know, materializing up there. So that means there's something going on up there, usually some kind of lift, something like that. So. Uh, you, you can tell there's something going on here that serious you can it's no coincidence you can also see some here at the beginning of the loop as it moves through you see these storms start firing I think that's no coincidence there's probably a little wave moving through at this point right so what we're looking at here is uh, a basically we're looking at a cold front moving south interacting with warm and moist air and a ton of lift happening all at once uh, you're getting lift uh, first off from the upper atmosphere, have the winds blowing in a direction something like this, uh, or, you know, watch the anvil, you can see it's something like that, maybe a little bit more like that, but something in that area is where your upper level winds are. Your lower level winds, you can see here, just follow the cloud streaks, something like that. So you know you got pretty good turning right there. So this is a pretty highly sheared environment, and you can see these storms are developing right here. Uh, along what appears to be a boundary of some sort right through here and it kind of goes down here and then you, of course you see some uh, down here forming as well and those are actually forming off of the mountains in northern Mexico. Something you can tell kind of typically when you're looking at storm days see this dark kind of shaded area that's usually a sign of trees mountains something like that uh, that you can kind of pick up on and that allows you, you can see the Davis Mountains here in Texas as well Sacramento is here in New Mexico. You can actually see the low clouds interacting with that and actually can see white sands here. Oh, that's terrible. But you can see all kinds of terrain features. Here's a, actually another fun one. That's a lava flow right there, ancient lava flow up there in New Mexico. So, um, but basically what you can see here, let's actually, uh, let's stop this really quick. I want to stop this. Let's stop it right in here. Okay. Uh, let's go back a couple frames. I want to start toward the beginning of everything, just so we can kind of set the stage here. So what you see here is you see a, this boundary, right? But you also see over here, you can kind of mark out some of these low cloud 
uh, rolling features, that's a sign of low level stability, probably a little bit of capping, something like that. So probably why your storms haven't quite formed at this point. You can also see here, you can see a little bit of, uh, you can see the low level winds are a little bit backed here at the beginning. They veer a little bit with time. And of course you see up here, just all of this, this low level cold air advection going on up there. So what you're seeing is you're seeing uh, this cold front is shoving south. It's hitting this warm moist air. So obviously you're gonna get a lot of convergence here. And because of that, it's no surprise that you see storms just rapidly take off in this zone, right? It's no surprise. So as we jump forward, let's jump forward a few frames. And you can tell that initial area of agitated Q is where uh, storms go initially, right? And you can see this storm just absolutely blow up as that cold front really catches up with this. This might be a pre-surface trough. We'd have to turn on some uh, sound forecast observations to really tell what was going on here uh, on a finer scale. But what you can see is that you can see that you have a storm forming here, initial storm. That's probably when you're chasing one of the first ones you wanna be on. But what's gonna happen since this is a cold front, since it's moving south, since there's obviously very obviously a cold front that is moving south, you're gonna see storms start zippering down this line, right? So as you go with time, you're seeing the very typical behavior of a cold front with storms just slowly taking shape down this line. And you see, you're starting to see here even, uh, take a look at this, let's uh, pull up the annotate tool again so I can point these out. You can see individual cells actually uh, poking their head up. I'm just pointing out some overshooting tops here. So you can tell these aren't isolated. You don't even need radar to tell that. These are quite busy and you actually see one back here behind the front as well. And so you can tell these storms are not isolated. They're not isolated in any way. Uh, another thing that I can tell from this is that these storms are certainly, I mean, you're, you're gonna end up with a line here. I mean, this is absolutely what's gonna happen. And of course, you, I mean, you, you, you don't, you don't even need a model to show, tell you this. If you just look at the satellite loop in the morning, if, if you will open up the uh, satellite loop and this is what you see in the morning up here, and this is what you see in the morning, uh, down here, like you see that all happening. Let's move that down here. Let's get you out of the way. And you see this moving right here like that. You know that you're going to have a lot of convergence, probably a lot of storms, right? It's pretty obvious that you're going to end up with something kind of crowded and linear. And as you just watch this, you can see uh, these storms take shape, zipper down. You can even see this one start diving southeast. So this one is, uh, oh, I need to turn on the annotate again. But this one has is diving uh, kind of this direction, right? It's starting to do that. That's because the cold front's pushing it down, a lot of things, but it's moving right. So I would be paying attention to this one as a possible tornado threat early on in the event before everything takes off. Let's go with the big reveal, right? What's happening? Uh, well, first off, uh, w let's review really quick. Uh, just I can tell you what's happening, uh, what looks like happening. I actually did this blind, did not know what was going on uh, on this day. I had actually forgotten what was happening, so I was kind of doing it on the fly, making up as I go, see how right I am. Uh, but let's talk about it. So first off, you see this, this storm. I'm talking about this storm. Looks like there's a bunch of crowdedness going on down through here, a little bit of a line taking shape. But this, obviously, I think this is a supercell. This is a supercell, and these are uh, you know, singles or multi-cells happening uh, through here taking shape. And what's going to happen eventually is this whole thing is going to become a line, right? So let's take a look at what's happening. And so now we can see the radar loop and what's happening, right? You can see exactly what's happening. This is a supercell right here. Uh, very uh, HP looking. Not <laughs> very impressive though. Uh, very, very impressive looks. You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say tornado, almost certain, but uh, there were no tornado reports on this day. Lots of hail reports, but you can see there were storms up here north uh, of the front, as we talked about earlier. There's this storm right here, and then there's a bunch of single and multi-cells down this way, right? And so what happens as we go through this day, let's bounce forward one hour. Let's just bounce forward one hour so we can show you 
exactly what happens. The supercell continues for a while at the head of this line, but it does become a line eventually. So you can tell all that when you are looking at satellite, when you are breaking it down and seeing it happen right here in front of you, you don't need radar, you don't need models, you don't need anything. You can do a lot of your forecasting via satellite. With that said though, remember, weather's for everybody. No, truly, weather is for everybody. In fact, it's for you. If, if this is like, wow, this is amazing, it's for you because you're learning. If you're like, this is very basic, I know this. Well, it's also for you. Don't be a jerk about it, but it's also for you. And hey, be sure to subscribe, like this video, follow this playlist. We've got a lot more videos coming in this playlist, and we will see you next time.